Hi, welcome back to my Alan Bradley PLC test bench. Today we're going to be testing the Slick 500 1746 NT8. Now this is a 8 channel thermocouple or millivolt input card. It, uh, this is a version 1.3 which is about what they all came at and they're usually pretty hardy cards. So it's got a about a 20 pin connector at the front which I've got wired up on the other module there um, and we'll just go over the wiring when we uh, get there but one of the uh, funny things about this card which is the only card I've seen it on is right here at the bottom is a terminal and it's got a little wire connector now when you read through the instructions which is always a good thing on page 2-11 of the uh, manual for the L for the NT8 installing and wiring your module and also on page, page 10 right there it says you should connect a ground wire to TB1 before installing the module now this ground wire gives this module a proper ground reference and their recommendation from Alan Bradley is to have it tied to the ground lug on the chassis. Now this is assuming that you've got a ground lug on tied to the chassis somewhere or your closest available good quality ground. So it's part of what you need to get this module to work and read properly when you're reading temperature with this module. So I've got a set of eight type J thermocouples that uh, are all I purchased at the same time, same lot, same manufacturer and here they are wired up on the uh, arm. Now this arm something that uh, you've got to be careful with. It has small screws in it and I used a two millimeter snap-on flat screw, uh, bladed screwdriver and it fits properly into the holes to be able to loosen and tighten. Now this card which you probably you won't be able to see but right there at the top uh, thermocouple someone has used a screwdriver before that it was larger and that is taken and cleaned out the hole and made it bigger which is not a good thing. So use the proper screwdriver and like I say in this case it's a two millimeter and this is my snap-on out of my snap-on set that's always hanging there um, an SDE 220 if you're interested in buying it and the set itself is the SDE 70 which is a really good quality set to have <coughs> excuse me so what we'll do is just get swung around here so that you can see the chassis, you can see the uh, screen, and we'll test the one in the car in, that's in the chassis. We know I know it works well. And then we'll just just because we'll move over to the other one. So right back in a second. Thank you very much. Okay, we're back. So the card is inserted in the rack, and you can see right here. Here's the wiring arm I was just showing you. Now, one of the things with the uh, card, it's got some self-diagnostics. If you get a broken or open on any of these uh, thermocouples, and we'll just disconnect the card to show you, you can see all of a sudden the lights start flashing. And the data, and as it recognizes all the cards, it just goes through the multiplexer in, that's built in, it puts all of the data to zero, which is something that you can set up. So if we plug this back in, and there's the CJCs, the cold junction compensators, top and bottom, which are required. And you see it takes a little bit for that card to get itself reset and reading the temperature again. So that's the basics of that card on the hardware end. So let's go down to the screen. Now on this side and I don't know how easy this is going to be to able to see with the way screens flicker but anyhow um, all of these cart modules 
or all of these channels, pardon me, are set up as Celsius because I'm in Canada. So 23.230 and the bottom one there is 23 degrees Celsius, which is about what it is in the room here. 22, 23, 22, 23.7. Like there are differences and this is an older card, so yes, it's going to happen. So let's just swing around here. We will go into the IO configuration screen. And we'll just back up just a bit. Okay, so there's our card. So when you first do your offline uh, read IO config or you add it manually, then you go into advanced configuration and here's the first screen that comes up so it's a maximum eight words and everything else this is all automatic with the slick 500 software so now you have to go into configure and we'll just bring this back around here and tighten it down so it doesn't move on us again um, so I'm using type J thermocouples but you can use K T E B and ends uh, plus minus 50 millivolts, 100 millivolts, or C CJC temperature. So you've got lots of different options, but we've got a full set of J's. Uh, temperature unit, you can pick Celsius or Fahrenheit. I pick Celsius. Broken input, right here, it'll give you a zero, or you can upscale, downscale, or disabled. So zero is always good. Okay, data format, engineering units. You have a choice of units times 10, scaled for PID or raw proportional. Engineering units gives us the 228. Now the other thing is the input image type and it's either status word or data word. Now, in this case, for doing fast and easy testing, you set it to data word. It defaults to status word. The other thing you have to do up here in the top is channel enabled. And you have to do, you can set each channel individually and you have to enable or disable each channel individually. So if we make a change, let's say on the first one, we change that to Fahrenheit. You go down to the bottom. Let's just see if we can get down there. There we are. And hit apply. And then you hit OK. And it comes up with this screen here. And it's configuration rung and data. This is where it's going to put everything. Now in this case there's only the two, two rungs in the file which is the copy the integer data and the actual inputs. Just say OK. But when you first set it up, if you don't have the rungs, it'll insert the rungs for you. Hit OK. Hit OK. Now, if we go to, that was channel 0, it's still reading. Oops, sorry, let me get back over here. That was channel zero we changed. Okay, so we hit it into program, back into run, and it stays in Celsius. Yep, that's interesting. Oh, no, there it is. It's finally changed over. It says 73 degrees. So there's nothing fast about these, but temperature, there is nothing fast. So, there's how you test a good card. And the, you'll see in a half a second here why I say a good card. So, let's just back up. We'll go back to the chassis. And there we go. Now, I'm going to change this card out. So, when you're changing cards in Slick 500, you have to shut the system down. So, in this case, I turn it to program. I turn off the power, take off the wiring arm, 
So what you do if you were doing it in production, remove the card, that one, and I take my other card, which is the one I was showing you there earlier, and you slide it in, and there we go. And you hook up your wiring arm, and we power it up. And as you can probably see, we're in, uh, because we're in program mode, and I just want to get closer here so you can see what happens. Okay, so now we, we're going to go into run mode. And the processor goes into fault, as you can see right there. The color differences in this light are, are a little hard to see, but you can see the red around the, the green. So we'll go back into the into the uh, screen here. There's our fault on on the. Uh, back up just a bit. Okay, so we are in run mode. I'll just turn it to remote mode just so it's which you can see there change to. We change to go to error. And of course we have to go down here. Okay, discrete I.O. module in slot 3 which is our NT card which is required for the program is detected as having the wrong I.O. count. This could also mean that a specialty card driver is incorrect. So what this means when you see it, we hit clear major error, and it does, is that that card is dead. So we've got this cleared off. We'll close this screen. Okay. And as you can see, we're in remote program. We go back over here. Okay, and we'll go to run mode. Five, four, there, didn't take very long and that's faulted. So, if we go back to program, just so we can prove to, our, to myself and your, yourself, change the card back to the same one we were using earlier, this one here, plug it back in, and I'm just going to turn the key switch to run to begin with, power it up, And, oh, we were still faulted. See, you have to retry. You have to clear the fault when you change it. And as soon as you clear, clear the fault, it latches the faults. It won't let anything run. So anyhow, that was kind of a long-winded video, but that's how you test the NT8 in our, my shop. It also shows you the value of testing every card you get within a couple of days of receiving it. Um, I give an 18 month warranty on my cards, so it's if I had sent this out without testing it, I would have known that uh, there was a problem. So anyhow, uh, and the other thing I didn't do is I didn't hook up the ground wire to the card to give us accurate temperature readings because we were just swapping them back and forth so I could show you the dead card. Thanks very much. Uh, subscribe if you'd like. Come back anytime. Um, I hopefully can get more videos posted here in the next while. And uh, probably the next one I'll do is uh, Control Logic's OF4 uh, tied into a IF8 because I just happen to have some of those ready for testing. Thanks a lot. Come back anytime.
Bye.